Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're going to talk about the first of two different landing battles for the invasion of the Gallipoli Peninsula. This landing is at Anzac Cove, also known as the landing at Gaba Tepe, located on the Gallipoli Peninsula, Ottoman Turkey, between British commander William Birdwood and his Anzac forces consisting of New Zealand and Australian divisions of more than 16,000 men against Ottoman commander Mustafa Kemal and his 9th and 19th Division with his 10,000 defenders on April 25, 1915. High Command had determined there were at least two landings needed to occur almost simultaneously to start the invasion of the Gallipoli Peninsula. The first consisted of the mostly inexperienced and understrength New Zealand and Australian troops, otherwise known as ANZAC troops, under the command of Lieutenant General William Birdwood. British command had left behind two mounted brigades in Egypt, believing mounted troops would have no purpose in an amphibious landing and instead focused on landing the remaining men at Gaba Tepe early in the morning. Typically, the British command at the time believed that the area would be sparsely defended and took no consideration of the Turkish defenses that might be in the area. Originally scheduled to land on the morning of April 23rd, a storm had delayed the landing until the 24th, in which at 1 a.m. the British Navy deployed 36 rowing boats to land the troops at the beach, a far cry from the amphibious landing craft that would be seen 30 years later during World War II. The first six Anzac companies began landing in the dark, but had missed their landing beach by almost a mile. The British command had never even considered this beach in their plans because the beach was blocked by steep cliffs about 100 feet tall. The only good news for the Anzac forces is the beach was only lightly defended and they only received small arms fire from the Turkish defenders as they landed. Brave Anzac soldiers of the 9th and 10th Battalion had to crawl up the steep cliffs using bayonets dug into the side of the cliffs to help them up or when necessary pulling at the plants growing out of the side of the cliffs and using a plant to help brace them. When they reached the top, they found the Turkish trenches empty and abandoned. Once secured, Anzac forces landed six more companies in a pre-morning darkness, only receiving any real threat of attack after 5.30 a.m. when Turkish Lieutenant Colonel Mehmet Sefik of the Turkish 27th Infantry Regiment received orders to engage the Anzac troops. Sefik, along with his 27th Infantry Division, was accompanied by a machine gun company and an artillery battery who all moved with the Turkish forces to engage the Anzac troops. By 9 a.m., Sefik had engaged the Anzac 2nd Battalion and pushed them back. Within two hours, Sefik had secured a defensive position and dug in waiting for an Anzac counterattack. For the entirety of the day, the Anzac troops had launched three waves of attacks at the Turkish positions. Unfortunately, due to multiple bad orders and poor equipment, the Anzac troops found themselves in a woeful position that had to then resist a Turkish counterattack. By the end of the day, the Anzac forces had landed 16,000 men, quite a distinction for amphibious warfare using rowboats. The Anzac forces had secured a beachhead but had not cleared the area in front of that beachhead. There were some Anzac and Turkish positions that were facing each other that were only separated by a few meters of dead man's land. Anzac officers were concerned, and that evening they approached Lieutenant General Birdwood to evacuate from the beach. Birdwood was not willing to do that and instead commanded his troops to dig in as deep as possible. Anzac forces lost approximately 3,000 soldiers, at least 2,000 wounded, more than 900 dead, and at least four were captured. The Ottomans lost less during the invasion with an approximate 2,000 men dead and wounded. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.